I want to talk to you today about the coronavirus, protecting yourselves against the virus, some of the things you can do in your work, as well as cars, some safety issues with cars and the virus. Like many of you, I not only love cars, but drive them all the time, collect them. I've been deeply thankful that I owned a company called Precious Metals, Fine Motor Cars of San Diego, with my wife Judith for the past 20 years. Our general manager, David Young, has served many of you, and we thought we would put a video together to help car collectors, people that sell cars, enjoy them in safety in this very difficult time. Cars are a great part of American passion, and I, as an ear, nose, and throat surgeon in San Diego, I have recognized that there are significant risks in both driving cars related to the coronavirus, as well as enjoying one of our great American passions. I've put together today a few things to help us understand exactly how to help in our safety of both driving a car and also enjoying working on a car. Here I put together a few things to help us understand that. Most of us that repair cars or work on cars use certain products, for example, gloves. Here is a pair of gloves that most of us do wear each day if we're putting oil in a car or windshield fluid in a car. And when we put those gloves on, often they're older, they may have holes in them, and they are risk profiles for the virus. Coronavirus is a very small virus. It is one micron in size. It goes through most things. It also sits on surfaces for days on end. For example, stainless steel, it sits there for three days. On plastics, it sits there for three days. So the gloves really do protect us. On the other hand, they're often the very first thing that touches the virus. So remember, your gloves alone are sources of viral transmission. So what I'd recommend all of you do before you start working on your car is to take a pair of gloves and put them as undergloves. That way, you're a little bit separated from the virus. So let's watch how that works out. So I'm gonna put a pair of gloves on as I do every day as a surgeon. And then I'm gonna put the over gloves on just like this. And that way I'm protected a little bit from whatever that glove comes in contact with. So let's see how that works out here. I've got these gloves on now, no holes. And I'm gonna basically show you how I would change oil or do something inside the car. So here, for example, is a plastic bottle. Remember when you buy this at the store, that may actually have viral particles on it. So those viral particles last three days. So you make sure you handle them with gloves. Make sure that whatever you do with that, when you discard it after it's used, that it goes into a plastic bag and stays for three days or is discarded in another safe fashion because you don't want someone else touching that. So let's talk about how that might work. So as I lift up the engine bay of the car here, I may want to change the oil or I may want to do the coolant or I may want to do the uh, windshield fluid. Whatever I want to do, think of that as a surface that may have viral particles on it. Whether that's simply to lubricate a product, remember this product here might have viral particles on it, so again, wipe it down, make sure you're using a 70% alcohol solution. Make sure you've got hand sanitizer with you all day, again, 70% alcohol in that hand sanitizer. Think of other things too that you might not even think about as a significant issue. What about the detailer? Make sure your detailer is wiped down before you use it. Make sure that that is thought of as a source of viral particles as well. Other areas that you may not think of may be boxes. This arrived today by a UPS shipment. That shipment, for example, may have viral particles on it. It can last up to three days. So as a result of that, when you take that box out, think of that as a source of transmission. And when you take the products out inside, you may want to change gloves. Remember that what's inside was packaged separately. Three days it can survive, so make sure you take great care with that. Other areas of the car that may be important to think about, the door handles. How many people drove the car? Three or four? Their handprints, the viral particles, similarly the, the steering wheel of the car. All those areas potentially can harbor the virus. Maybe wash them down with alcohol. 
maybe wash them down with wipes. All of them can be a great help in protecting you against the virus. Let's talk a little bit about protection. I'm going to take off my gloves now, and I'm going to show you how to take off the inner gloves to protect you and your family against the virus. Let's watch how we do that. So I'm going to put this down here, and I've got my gloves on. Remember, they might have viral particles on them, so what you want to do is you want to grab it on the other side in the middle and pull it out, not touching it, and then on the inside of the glove here, you grab the back and pull it off. Put it right into a plastic bag and discard it accordingly, okay? I'll put that over here. Let's talk about these things, masks over here for a second. Here's a wonderful mask of no use to the virus. Regular mask doesn't filter the virus. But many of you are familiar with the N95. Make sure it has an N95 sticker on it. N95 protects you against the virus down to 0.3 microns. Make sure you've got an N95 mask on. One thing I will tell you though, is as you breathe in with the mask, the virus is on the outside. So when you take off the mask, make sure you don't touch the outside. Make sure you touch the inside, put it down on a surface, be careful, and the next day pick it up by the sides so you don't touch the outside. Otherwise, potentially, you could be communicating the virus back. Remember the wipes, if you can get them, they're great, they also help with things. So let's talk about getting into a regular daily driving car right now. So again, the same risks are there. Remember the door handles, 70% alcohol, wipe them off. Use the products that you have. If not, you can use a 70% isopropyl alcohol with a cloth and wipe that down. Remember the steering wheel. Steering wheel is a source of transmitting the virus. Wipe that steering wheel down. Make sure that it's cleaned. Remember, a family may be using the car. You might have your kids, your wife, your friends using the car. Anytime somebody gets in it, they can transmit the virus. Remember the knobs, remember the windows, remember all those things, your sunglass position. But don't forget the keys. Often people forget that the keys are a great source of the virus, so please make sure they're cleaned as well. And most importantly, we all touch our phones all day long. Please make sure you wipe those down with a 70% alcohol solution several times a day. Make sure it's not too moist not to damage the phone. But remember your phone, that's a great source of transmission. Now we're gonna go and try to put gas in the car and I'll show you some of the safety features that are necessary when you're tanking up. So here we are, we're going to fill the gas tank with gas. This is an area of very significant risk for coronavirus, COVID-19. So I'm gonna show you some tricks that you can do to minimize the chance of transmitting the virus. So the first thing we usually do is open the uh, car gas tank. Remember, there might be viral particles on this as well. So if you do have gloves, the first thing I'd recommend you do is to get some gloves on, because that's the safest way to do it. There's different types of gloves and different qualities of gloves, but any type of glove will generally protect you. Be careful if you're latex allergic not to have latex gloves, but we'll put this on right now. So the first thing we'll do is have gloves on if you have them. Just like we all do every day. And then our next step we'll usually do is our credit cards. So remember that potentially there's always risk of viral particles. So if you're going to do your credit card, make sure you wipe it off afterwards. So in this particular case, we'll take our credit card. We'll put that in and remember right here, we may touch the plastic, so be careful again. Remember your credit card. Put in our zip code, remember the risks. And you want to make sure before that goes back into your wallet that you wipe it down with 70% alcohol or a wipe. So we'll put that aside for now. We'll lift up the handle and again, then we'll put the handle in basically to turn that on. We've got gloves on the whole time that protect us. We'll fill that up with gas. And... All right, now let's talk about what if we don't have gloves for a second, okay? 
So in the case we don't have gloves in that situation, let's take off our gloves. Remember how to take them off, grab one in the middle and on the inside of the other one, grab the back and throw them right in the trash. You've got towels always here. Take out two towels. Put them together like that. And then what you want to do with those towels, you want to grab the surface, put that in, fill the tank. And remember, don't let go, don't move your hand, try not to do any motion with that. Once you're done, lift out the handle, put it back, straight out, use 70% alcohol to wipe your hands, or use one of the towels to wipe your hands off completely, both sides, and don't forget to wipe down your credit card as well before you put that back in your wallet, throw out your wipe, and be safe. Hope that gives you a little help in protecting you at the gas station. May all be safe.